everybody. Happy Friday and welcome to Collider Movie Talk, Movie Talk for Movie Fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is The Daily Show, where we bring you the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us this morning is your Collider Movie Talk crew. First up, leading the pack today, production manager, Dennis Sen. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Collider Movie Talk. Sorry that we are late today, but we are waiting for the Warcraft trailer to hit. We're all standing around here, looking at my computer, <laughs> looking for the live stream at Blizz con of course they milked it and milked it and milked it and took forever and then he finally showed it so we're going to talk about it so friday usually light news day but for some reason this friday we have so much to talk about so much to talk about joining us also it's josh mcuga hey Sinead. hey guys how's everybody that that uh, that was quite the wait yes <laughs> quite the wait that's all i will say and also David Griffin. I thought it was actually a pretty good Blizzard presentation. You know, esports are huge right now. I mean, StarCraft fans, come on, come on. All right, before we get into today's topic, we wanted to update you on the situation with uh, Daniel Fleetwood. If you haven't heard, uh, John and Christian talked about it before in Jedi Council. He's the, the sick, he's a terminally sick a Star Wars fan from Texas. He's about 32 years old. There's kind of been an ongoing campaign online about trying to get him to see Star Wars The Force Awakens as soon as possible. Um, and it, I guess it finally happened, and J.J. Uh, Abrams reached out to him, and they they flew uh, a copy to his house, and he got to see it. Uh, his wife released a statement today. Uh, uh, Sinead, can you read off that statement? Yes. His wife, Ashley, said the following, to all of our wonderful supporters, friends, family, and awesome strangers, Daniel's final dream was just granted. Today, the wonderful Disney and Lucasfilms made his final dream come true in the amazing, typical Disney way. They really do make dreams come true. Daniel just finished watching an unedited version of Star Wars The Force Awakens. We would like like to thank the awesomely talented J.J. Abrams for calling us yesterday to tell us that Daniel was getting his wish granted. We would also like to thank Lynn, Ben, and Anna Walk for coming to our home and screening the movie for Daniel. Lastly, I want to thank all the amazing people who helped make this happen. Thank you beyond words. May the force be with you all. Hashtag force for Daniel. All right, uh, and let's move on to our first topic. Legendary Pictures has just released the first official trailer for the highly anticipated Warcraft movie based on the popular video game franchise from Blizzard Entertainment. The trailer debuted this morning from BlizzCon 2015 and immediately was posted online for everybody to see. The movie tells the tale of the initial encounters between humans and orcs and the conflicts that arise from the meeting of the two races. The movie is being directed by Duncan Jones and stars Travis Fimmel, Paula Patton, Ben Foster, Dominic Cooper, Toby Kebbell, Daniel Wu, and Clancy Brown. Warcraft comes out on March 11th, 2016. Dennis, what did you think of the trailer and how does it compare to what you saw at this past Comic-Con? I really liked it. Uh, I had seen kind of the initial trailer that they made for Comic-Con before and I remember not being very impressed by it. I mean, it was all right. It was quick. It was very, they showed a lot of footage and it was, you could still see the green screen and a lot of the CG was unfinished. And yeah, this one, I actually really like this one. It's a, it's, it's a good blend between something like a Lord of the Rings and even like Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Mm -hmm. I, I get that kind of feel. Yeah, it looks much more epic in scale as well. You see a lot more going on. You see a lot more of this story. I liked it a lot. Uh, I know we had to sit through a bunch of other stuff that we didn't... <laughs> You know, we're really care for, but I, I per, me personally, I thought it was worth the wait. David, I, I, I love this trailer. I love hearing um, uh, Travis uh, Fimmel's voice doing the voiceover. He's playing uh, Anduin, uh, if I pronounce that correctly. And it's humans versus the orcs. It looks, it looks epic. It looks big. It looks, I think it's going to be a fun movie. I mean, I'm not, you know, saying it's going to you know, <laughs> blow our minds, but I uh, Duncan Jones. I mean, Dennis, no, you and I both love Moon. Yeah, he's a fantastic uh, director. So I'm excited to see what he does with this. Could be campy. But within the hands of Duncan Jones, this could be something good. Josh? You know, I don't know. I, I guess I never played the games. Uh, I always just thought that the orcs were owned by the Lord of the Rings people, so that you like, couldn't take them <laughs> <Copyright> outside <laughs> of that realm. Like, you can't, orcs can't be anywhere else. I guess I was a little confused by I, that. I, I I'm showing a, my green. I see a lot of comments yeah, uh, just in the YouTube. Uh, whatever. Video. My bad. My bad. <laughs> what I will say is, like, the motion capture looked a little weak. Mm -hmm. um, I thought the orcs looked a little too CGI. Um, I thought that the the humans looked pretty cool. I like the storyline. It's like a Native American, uh, you know, pre-colonial kind of era kind of thing, trying to assimilate with with other cultures. And obviously, there's going to be a war kind of thing about. I like that that 
that's the storyline. I think I have to just wrap my mind around the fact that that it is fantasy. Right, and unlike Lord of the Rings, the orcs aren't the bad guys. There's mm -hmm. different points of view. Right. Like they have their issues, the humans have their issues, and maybe they'll come together. Maybe like, they'll well, say, yeah, that's what, kind of yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Planet of the Apes, and like you mentioned, like a Avatar style, right. Pocahontas, yeah. that, that type of. I, I, I maybe because I was so let down at Comic Con. For me, this is a huge improvement, and okay. it's changed my outlook and anticipation for the movie because before I was kind of more lukewarm to, to what I saw and now mm -hmm. this I'm like much more excited I feel like potentially obviously this is just one trailer potentially this you know maybe this will be better than what we got with the most mo more recent hobbits which I liked but I didn't love them man you could if you make this better than the hobbit it won't be that difficult I didn't really like the <laughs> hobbits that much I thought they were kind of boring especially the final one this one do does look like it's got a ton of action. I love any of these kind of like Lord of the Rings kind of mm -hmm. things. I just, again, like I said, I, I, those, the orcs don't look that great to me. Really? Yeah. I, I think they're a big improvement. I mean, they definitely do look CG, but they look less CG than they did a few months ago. Okay. Right. So I, I, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to it. Okay. All right. Uh, what's next? Just when we thought we had seen the last of any new Star Wars The Force Awakens footage after the final U.S. trailer that was released a few weeks ago, an international trailer for Japan has been released today showing off some never-before-seen footage. Several scenes featuring different character interactions were shown throughout. If you don't want to hear any more about the new footage, please skip to the next topic. But if you do, David, what was some of the new footage that we see in this Japanese trailer, and what did you think about it? That image right there on the screen just sums it up. That was awesome. I mean, that scene with Ray and you know Kylo Ren, the lights. I, I almost wish I didn't see that scene because all we saw of her, that we knew she was in conflict on that planet. We see her in the other trailer. She looks like she's shooting at something, shooting a ship coming at her, something like that. It's, I don't call it a spoiler. Um, it, it, it looks great. First of all, let me just say it looks fantastic. I'm, I'm excited to see this, but I think some of these scenes I wish I didn't see. I love the opening shot though uh, of her um, in the next to the Star Destroyer on Jakku. Like it looks like the big um, the engine. Like yeah. she's right yeah. right by it, and you see how massive that is and how small she looks. And of course, her interactions with BB-8. I think we're going to earn him or her. BB-8 could be her. Uh, some more fans uh, than she already has. Josh. Yeah. I mean, it was a completely different trailer. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm I'm upset that I watched it or I'm even more excited. I don't think it gave away much more uh, than than the other one did. That's always been my problem with trailers is that a lot of times trailers give away a lot of stuff like Southpaw, or whatever. Um, but I think uh, I, yeah, this one got me. This this was an awesome trailer. I was pumped about it. That yeah, a lot of people. I saw some tweets out there that said they liked it better than the the U.S. one that debuted a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about that yet, but. I don't know if, about like liking it more. Mm -hmm. It's definitely like I said. It's very different. This this one had way more action. Mm -hmm. I thought, um, and totally different. There was only a few of like the same shots, like the Harrison Ford, you know, Han Solo talking about the Force. It's all real and that kind of stuff. Cool interactions between Ray mm -hmm. and Boyega, and um, I, yeah, that th this one. This one is a movie. Okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, there's a lot of things. Uh, I mean, in, in the very beginning, it's kind of the same when when Ray is asked. I, uh, she says, "I'm no one." Yeah. You know what that means? I mean, she's someone. Yeah. I mean, she's like Luke's daughter, whatever. I, okay, here's always been my argument. If ever, all these theorists with, with Star Wars have been like, it's Luke's daughter. It's yeah. Han and Leia's daughter. Why in every Star Wars do the parents just leave their kids? Why are they leaving their kids? Don't know. Because yeah. they have to hide them because they're so powerful. Ah, I guess. Unbelievable. I don't know. Yeah, She also, they have a line in here. She says, I know all about waiting. And then they kind of cut it. I think it's a little cheap. Then it goes, for my family. It, it's obviously taken from a different dialogue or speech, and they moved it over okay. there. But for my family, what, what does that mean in the right. context of is she related to, yeah. to the Skywalkers or Leia and Han? I like the maybe my favorite part in the, in, the, in this new trailer was when uh, Kylo Ren is walking in with his all of his boys and mm -hmm. there's like blowing stuff up. That wasn't in the first mm -hmm. one, uh, you know. He's got a and there there looks like they're just like blowing up that village. That looks pretty badass. Yeah, and we see the flame trooper. Yeah, oh, the that's flame. What, yeah, the flame. Yeah. Oh man. And uh, what else do we got here? Um, we saw a quick shot of Leia at the command center with C three PO. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that shot right there is the one that most that's people, the money shot. Right yeah, there. people were talking yeah. about because we haven't seen. Kylo Ren and Rey in the same yeah. shot before. But we do see uh, Boyega light up his lightsaber, mm -hmm. which we didn't see. Mm -hmm. You kind of see him in the background, you know, when when uh, K 
Kylo Ren has the, the lightsaber, but we don't actually see Boyega light up the lightsaber, and we do in, in this trailer. And then Kylo Ren says something in this trailer also saying, fulfill our destiny. I think a lot of people are reading a little more into that. Yeah. They're saying, thinking, okay, maybe he's talking about family destiny. Right. I might think that's maybe he's talking about the Knights of Ren. He's talking about uh, the destiny of whatever they were formed to do. True. So I'm not sure if that necessarily connects him to uh, the Skywalker family. And if, if there's like some... Uh, flashbacks to Vader training him things that we didn't see in in four five and six something of that nature you know what I mean I, that's always a possibility and then it kind of ends with the hope is not lost today it is found that's like a line that we didn't hear in, oh, yeah. in the first one uh Sinead what do you think of the trailer um I liked it first of all I think it's like so much different than the one that we saw a couple weeks ago but I guess my question is is why what makes them decide to put out a completely separate trailer internationally? Like, why didn't they just release that across the United, like across the world? Um, I'm not too sure, but I know they cut different trailers for different regions t for specific markets. I don't know specifically why something in the one that we saw before right. wouldn't work for a Japanese right. market. Like right. I can understand certain things they want to play to certain audiences, but for star Wars, I think it's pretty much universal. And well, these two trailers are, I think they're very different. That's why I was very 100%. curious about it. I think um, maybe also too, is that that pan Asian audience is like a third of the world. Mm -hmm. So in order mm -hmm. to get that audience more excited for the movie and not like you had to do that but in order to do i think that you, you know release a new trailer shows that star wars is they want that audience mm -hmm. they want to do it and then, and then hopefully the pan asian audience will appreciate it okay um i just want to note too uh david had to leave we we started much later than than, than uh we had planned we hey, thought that the warcraft trailer was going to drop right away but we waited like 20 something minutes and he had to take off that's why he's not here also wanted to uh, we forgot to kind of address the daniel fleetwood thing it's kind of one of those those bittersweet things it's like oh, we're man. happy that we that he got his wish but at the same time we're still sad about so the, circ sad. the circumstances it's heartbreaking i mean it's it's an amazing thing to me that um that a, a movie that is so anticipated the most anticipated movie probably in the history of movies right that uh and they, they may not do a press screening they may not they may just wait for the premiere the la premiere or whatever um that jj abrams and all the people at disney would go out of their way yeah. to a guy and would do this this is something that like and I might get crushed for this, but this is something like the NFL may not, would not do. Like mm -hmm. Roger Goodell would be like, nah, don't worry about yeah. it. We, you know, what, what are we going to do it for one cancer victim? We have to do it for everybody. That's the thinking of like somebody that runs the NFL, whereas Disney's like, this guy wants it. People, why not? Yeah. Why not help the fans? This guy can't get out of his bed. He might be, he may, might be dead before Star Wars Awakens, Force Awakens comes out. It's an amazing thing that they were they would do that. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah, and I think all the fans, Star Wars fans around the world, you guys, whoever tweeted out that that hashtag uh, Force for Daniel, yeah. really helped that help get the message to them. And 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 props to Disney and JJ and all of them yeah. for making it happen. And happen making it happen quick. They flew right out there and, and showed them a cut of the movie. Yeah, awesome. So so cool. All right, uh, now on to buy or sell. Uh, Sinead, what do we got? The Weinstein Company has released a new trailer for Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight. The film is Tarantino's second Western and follows the story of a group of dangerous strangers that are stuck in a stagecoach stopover when a blizzard snows them in. The movie stars Kurt Russell, Samuel L. Jackson, Jennifer Jason Lee, Walton Goggins, Tim Roth, Michael Madsen, Demian Bashir, Bruce Dern, and Channing Tatum. The Hateful Eight opens in limited release on December 25th and then opens opens wide on January 8th, 2016. Josh, did you buy or sell this new trailer for The Hateful Eight? I'm on record of saying that I sold the first trailer. Like really? I didn't, I didn't like the first trailer that much, uh, but this one sold, I'm back. Okay. I'm buying this one. Um, I thought that it felt too much like Django Unchained, which isn't a bad thing, because I really enjoy Django Unchained. I, I said it was Django Unchained in the snow. Uh, but this one is fantastic. A lot more dialogue in there, some really good Tarantino type lines. And there's a, at the beginning, Kurt Russell's first line, he sounds like Jack Burton in Big Trouble Little China. <laughs> and I got pumped for that. I was like, yes, Jack Burton is back. And Kurt Russell, I mean, what was the last thing we saw him in that, that had any kind of gravitas? And now he's back. I love Miracle, Kurt Russell. Maybe? Yeah, Miracle. Yeah. And that was in 2003. Yeah. So that I'm really pumped now for Hateful Eight. Really excited. Yeah, I definitely buy this trailer as well. I, I do think it's the best out of the... I did not like the trailers like okay. you did before. I saw a trailer 
at Comic Con, which was a long, extended, I think four okay. or five minute cut. Wow. And then the first one that came out, I thought was good. This one was much better in the sense of the the music and the tone and the editing, the way they put it all together made me more excited. This one's definitely not a Django. I, I thought maybe it could be when they first announced it, but it's actually more like Reservoir Dogs and even a, a, a movie that I love, Clue, where they're kind of trapped in this one place and they kind of trying to figure things out. The one thing I do kind of like think about it, it's like, why does Kurt Russell announce to everyone, yeah. I've got this person and this person's worth this much amount of money and he just announces it to all these dangerous people? That That's a very good point. Uh, I Obviously, they're going to find out. I mean, they're in a cabin. So the fact that, you know, the criminal either runs her mouth or something. I like the fact that he goes in there and he's like, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to come at me? I'm here. It's like 12 Angry Men. You ever seen 12 Angry Men? They're all locked in that room. Yeah. It's a one act play off Broadway, whatever. All inside this awesome little blizzard hut. Uh, you get, Yeah, blizzard hut. And I love the cast. <laughs> and for some reason, Tarantino knows how to write for Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Like Samuel Jackson, he does. He's a huge movie star. He's you know great, but he does a lot of movies. And sometimes in some movies, like it's like what know, Tony Scott did for Denzel. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it, but know? but when he gets with uh, Tarantino, it's like it just he just shines. Ugh. Awesome. So, Sinead, did you see this trailer? I did. I what? like it. Uh -huh. I like the first one. I loved this one. Yeah. Um, this movie looks really good. Looks okay. really, really good. And you saw Django? I did. I oh, love Django. Okay. All right. All right. What's next? Filming for Marvel's Doctor Strange has begun recently, and some set photos from Nepal have started circulating the web. In the photos, Benedict Cumberbatch, who plays Doctor Strange, is seen sporting a beard while walking around Nepal. The film also stars Tilda Swinton, Rachel McAdams, Chiwetel Ejiofor, Mads Mikkelsen, Michael Stuhlbarg, and is being directed by Scott Derrickson. Doctor Strange is set to open on November 4th, 2016. Dennis, do you buy or sell these images of Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange? I buy them. I'm, I'm, I have to admit, I'm not a huge Doctor Strange reader, so I don't, I'm not too familiar with his background. I do know these scenes are probably after he has his accident and he's trying to search for, for someone to help fix his hands so he can use them again. And he, and he looks cool rocking that beard. I mean, Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch is one of my favorite actors. That awesome. And that's what makes me so excited for this movie that normally, you know, I'd be like, oh, Doctor Strange, I, I'm not... I don't know. It's not like a fan or favorite of mine. So, yeah. uh, but with him in it, this this makes me excited. This picture makes him look a lot like Christian Bale in Batman Begins when he's at, Searching, with Rachel yeah. Ghoul. Um, yeah. Uh, I again, I'm I'm with you. I don't know a ton about Doctor Strange, but you put Benedict Cumberbatch in the movie, I'm gonna go see it. You put Benedict Cumberbatch in the show, I'm gonna go see it. I don't care. That guy's the best. Um, I will say after like searching a bunch of images and seeing the transition of what Doctor Strange looks like, he goes from like beard to perfectly coiffed goatee, back mm. to beard, back to so he's he's got the facial hair thing going. So if that's what we got, that's what we got. Yeah, no. and there's, there's some videos I think that surfaced earlier this morning that from set they showed like kind of a hooded character that passes him by as he's walking around. Some people are speculating maybe it's the ancient one. I actually think it's probably Baron Mordu played by Chiwetel Ejiofor. Okay. I'm just that's, I'm just guessing on that, but yeah, it looks good. Yeah. All right, what's next? A new trailer for London Has Fallen, the sequel to the 2013 action film Olympus Has Fallen, has been released. The movie is directed by Babak Najafi and stars Gerard Butler as a Secret Service agent that accompanies the President of the United States, played by Aaron Eckhart, to the London funeral of the British Prime Minister. Of course, things aren't as they seem, and a plot to assassinate the President begins as he is visiting London. The movie also stars Morgan Freeman, Angela Bassett, Robert Forster, Jackie Earl Haley, and Melissa Leo. London Has Fallen hits theaters March 4th, 2016. Josh, do you buy or sell the trailer for London Has Fallen? Okay, what was the... There was Olympus Has Fallen, then what was the Jamie Foxx in? The White House Down. White House Down. With Channing Tatum. Right. Okay, so that movie stunk. Mm -hmm. But Olympus Has Fallen, I really liked. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed that. I, this trailer, I, I will say ton of fun how long is this movie this this trailer <laughs> looked like seven different movies in one this movie looked really long full of explosions the fact that london they show a couple wide shots of london and it looks like it's just on fire it looks like dresden mm -hmm. in world war ii um that looked really cool the, the the effects of all those explosions and and all that kind of stuff gerard butler looks badass i like aaron eckhart i love Anytime, like I love the show Homeland, so anytime you get the Middle East involved and some sort of terrorist plot with world leaders and stuff, I'm on board. I'm buying. 
Okay. I, I do buy this trailer, but I'm the opposite of you. I'm one of those people who I saw Olympus has fallen in, in the theater, and okay. I thought it was only okay. okay. I actually liked White House okay. Down. <laughs> right. I, it's really cheesy, but I think it's done so in a way that like it's done on purpose. There's something about Ro- Ro- uh, Roland Emmerich's films where he's like... He kind of like is tongue in cheek, and so, so that scene with Jamie Foxx and the Jordans. Come on, I, I, I thought it was hilarious when they're driving the limousine in circles yes. around the lawn. I I honestly think he did it on purpose, and it's good. just fun. And like the ending with the kid, the daughter with the the flag waving yeah. the flag. I just very Independence Day. Yeah, okay. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, that maybe that's just me. However, I am looking forward to London is falling. Yeah. I, I look at the trailer, and it doesn't blow me away or anything, but it looks like it's. It has a much bigger budget. One of my complaints about Olympus Has Fallen, when I watched it, I was like, wow. I, it's like, a lot of the effects were really cheaply done. Yeah. Like, I was like, I could do those at home on, on, on my system. They went zero to 60 on London Has Fallen. Though. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they, they, they made so much, or not so much money, but it made money. So they're like, yeah. let's invest some more and m- sure. make it look a lot better. So I'm actually looking forward to it. Anton Fuqua, though, directed the first one, but he's not back for this one. And what, what's this director's name? Babak Najafi? Yeah. I'm not really familiar with his work. The only thing that I see on his uh, IMDb that I would know is he directed a couple episodes of Banshee. Oh, yeah. So Do you watch Banshee? No, but I heard it's it's pretty good. Banshee is an action movie every mm-hmm. episode. Um, so if he has his hands in this, I'm excited to see what he does with, uh, with London Has Fallen. Because okay. Banshee's a great show. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, now we're coming to the segment called uh, Box Office Predictions, where we uh, try and predict. This is brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters, and this is where we try to predict who's going to win the box office this weekend and in what order. So I have a feeling we're probably going to have the <laughs> same same list. Because, there's only two of us. Yeah. Sinead, can you join in? Sure. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll we'll start off. I think our lists are all going to be pretty similar because okay. I think it's a pretty much a no brainer for this weekend. Yeah. Uh, at number one, Spectre. Yep. Everyone's waiting for that. Sure. Number two, the Peanuts movie. Done. Nostalgia, families, they're going to all come in. And then three, four, and five are just going to be a repeat of one, two, and three yeah. of last week, which yeah. are The Martian, Goosebumps, and Bridge of Spies. Right. Oh, I was going to I was gonna change up. I okay. was going to go Martian, Bridge of Spies, Burnt. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I think mean, so, I because c- word I of mouth, I think people are coming around on Burnt. So. I don't know, though. I feel like I haven't heard that much no. about it. Huh. Where like where I just, is the I made marketing that up hoping for that? that people would go out and see it <laughs> by my word of mouth so that my list would come true. <laughs> Sinead? Um yeah, it's definitely I mean I've heard mixed I haven't seen Spectre. I've heard mixed reviews on it, a lot of mixed reviews, but people are for sure going to go see it regardless. Peanuts movie will definitely be number 2. Obviously everyone loves the Peanuts movie mm-hmm. except for <laughs> yeah, except for um, Ashley Mova, apparently. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> but everybody loves the Peanuts movie. Maybe Burnt. Maybe Burnt could. Goosebumps shouldn't be in there, right? But I think the Halloween is over, so Goosebumps is out. That's true. Right? That's that true. That holiday fervor is out, and now you're going in like, oh, maybe I'd, I'd like to see a movie about a chef. Maybe yeah. it's date night time. Maybe all the, the time you spent getting hammered in, in your Halloween costume last weekend, you're going to see Burnt this weekend. And Bradley Cooper is super fine, so. <laughs> he is super There's fine. That. So that, that's Sinead's recommendation. Obviously, see it, because he's super fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, uh, before we get into Mailbag, I'm going to remind you we're doing a live show. We're going to take... Uh, live Twitter questions at the end. You can tweet us at Collider Video, and Sinead is going to pick out a few at the end. So, what's our first mailbag question? Raymundo writes Hello, crew. A few weeks back, you were talking about how many people that go to film school don't become directors or involved in making movies. On another show, you mentioned that most people that become big names in Hollywood are because they know someone in the industry. Does having a BA or AA matter at all? Are degrees something that studios take into consideration? Should people People just not bother going to school and just make small films in hopes to make it big someday. Well, as someone who went to film school, it it's actually, yeah, when you go out into the actual working world, it doesn't really help you very much. Where did you only, go to film school? Huh, uh, UC Santa Barbara. Okay. So the only time it really helps you is when you t- get an entry-level job. Mm-hmm. And then when you take that entry-level job, they see, okay, you went to film school, so you actually are interested. But other than that, it's it's two things networking and mm-hmm. your real slash resume and your real is like if you're a director cinematographer editor visual effects artist or whoever you are actors as well that's the most important thing because people mm-hmm. judge you on that mm-hmm. versus like oh you went to so-and-so film school they don't really care i think 
personally, and this uh, my douche factor is going to go through the roof on this one. I know it. Okay, I did a ton of NYU student films when mm -hmm. I was in New York when I lived there. I didn't. I've done a lot of USC student films out here. Um, I've done like New York Film Academy, all those kind of ones. When I was doing a lot more acting, I think that if you go to NYU or you go to USC, mm -hmm. that gets you a bigger foot in the door than a lot of other film schools, especially for actors. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know so much for filmmakers, but you got to but really in today's world go out and make it mm -hmm. make something find people that are really good find people that are visual effects artists if the story is good and the production is good you will get your foot ahead in hollywood it is it's when luck meets opportunity mm -hmm. and preparation so if you have an amazing reel and you have amazing body of work and you're given the opportunity and that luck just so happens to step in your door i don't think it really has anything to do with film school that has nothing to sell your degree short mm -hmm. i mean i went to college for none of this uh but um, the NYU student films and the USC student films were no better than any other thing that I've worked on outside of those big schools, really and truly. They were good. They were fine. They were decently written. They were had decent production value. But they weren't any better than something I did with New York Film Academy or something that I did with just some people off Craigslist that were going to make a movie. It, it really is your brain and what you've produced. I don't think it has any much to do with the degree. I also think, too, going to like schools like that, you're talking about NYU or USC, yeah. you're talking about like actual networking. Like I went to UC Santa Barbara. You know, I didn't really, yeah. the, the people there, I, I would probably say most of the people who graduated from my film studies program right. did not make a career into the entertainment industry. True. There's probably a small percentage, but most of them didn't. And so you're kind of, where I think USC and NYU, there's probably it's a higher higher networking. percentage, yeah. a lot of networking. Also, uh, I, I'm not going to say like film school is worthless because besides the networking, you also learn a lot about film history and theory and hopefully maybe some production. Uh, also, I think that but discipline, you learn, you, uh, yeah. th that, that's the <clears throat> thing is you have to figure out what kind of person you are. And I, I figured out kind of after film school that I'm actually more of a self motivator. So I like, I learned a lot of stuff after I left film school, yeah. but some people aren't like that. Some people need those classes. They have to go to class. They have to, you know, have someone to tell them you have to learn this or that. And, and I think you have to decide what kind of person you are. And there's two types of people in entertainment on the behind the camera kind of a thing, right? There's the people that talk about doing things and then do yes. them half baths. And there are people that actually do them and do them 100%. And you learn, I think, a lot of that dedication in film school because they have to get it done. And the, the feeling of actually doing something and going through with it is so gratifying that when you actually produce the product, it's it's you that's there. It's yours. You just haven't talked about it and, and, and then talked about it and talked about it and talked about it and never did it. Film school actually puts you in there. And it also, I think, too, it gives you a really cool thing of like. I learned a lot about post production. I learned a lot about the filmmaking process. I learned, but you but you can't take away from the pricelessness of actually being on set and watching somebody make a movie because you mm -hmm. learn so much more that way. And also when you get on set to, to work a job, they don't go through your resume and go, Oh, you went to so-and-so film school or blah, blah, blah. Right. They just got to look and see, can you do the job they asked yeah. you to do? But at, at USC or NYU, when Robert Zemeckis shows up to read your resume, you'd kind of like yeah. have to take with, with, you know, take it. Mm -hmm. Shanae, what are your thoughts about this? Um, well, there's a saying that's it's, 20% talent and 80% who you know as soon as you move to LA. And sadly, it's true. And I think it's more like 2% talent, 98% yeah. who you know. <laughs> Honestly, like I've done this my whole life. Like I started when I was three years old doing commercials and was kind of like forced into it. But once I moved out to forced LA, into it. forced into it, I had a momager who would take me. Momager. In. Oh, I got to meet She would Mrs. take DeFries. me and I was, um, I was in like Kellogg's Corn Flakes commercials as a <laughs> wee little one in South Africa. But Could you do your voice like from the... Kellogg's oh, South I African. sang, um, oh, what a beautiful morning, <laughs> <Yes>. that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so once I moved to LA, I remember it was like a couple weeks of just like talking to people. And before I knew it, I had an agent. And I met my agent simply because I introduced myself to every single person that I met. And then my manager, now Mark, Christian, and I all have the same manager, and it's all like who you know. It's like you talk to people, you get introduced to people. And when people from Chicago ask me like, I wanna move to LA, like I wanna do what you're doing. 
what's your advice? I'm like, you have to come out here, first of all. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything from over there. You have to come out here and you have to talk to people. Because like, you can go to school for four years, and we were joking about this before, I said I went to school for like three and a half minutes and then I dropped out. And it's true, because <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing anything in Chicago. Sure. Chicago was great for theater and I loved theater, but I knew I wanted to do TV, film, I wanted to do that. And the only way to do it was to get here and then just to meet a bunch of people. And once you meet people, you build up connections, and that's that. Well, like, also, we're, we're missing one uh, main component. We talk about uh, who you know, and we talk about talent, but also hard work. Because yeah. there's a lot yeah. of talented people out there don't that don't do put anything. in the work, yeah. right. and they just sit on their couch, and they're like, oh, I'm going to do that one day, yeah. some way. Just like Shia down, LaBeouf says. Down the line. Yeah. Do it. So just you, do it. Yeah, so you actually have to apply that hard work. And, huh. and, and, and you know, the thing is, who you know definitely helps a lot. But once you get it, that helps you get into that position, but if you can't, you have to be able to back it it's, up. It, well, it's a sink or swim. Like if you right. can't, you can't swim, you get thrown out there, and like you can't do the job. Especially after like nowadays, where everybody is doing it out here. Yeah. Like in LA, every single person you meet is in the same business as you are. So if you're not working as hard as the next person, you are really disposable in mm -hmm. that in that sense. Be irreplaceable. Yeah. Be the best <laughs> and be likable and, uh, and be friendly because <laughs> the people don't want to work with people who are not friendly right. back in the day, no matter how talented you are right. back in the day, a holes could get work and demand all this stuff. Now, if you're an a hole, see, it, we'll get somebody else mm -hmm. because there's way more talented people and way more people willing to do the work than some Jago that mm -hmm. comes in is like, I need my rider. I need this. I'm out and I want 10 million. Like, well, that's we why, that's why so we jettisoned uh, David yeah, uh, that's during the show. We're like, yeah. here. <laughs> we're like, Audi, Audi 5,000. He's gone. <laughs> oh, great. <cut. laughs> all right. Great what's cut. next? Sharuk writes, hello, Collider. You often talk about character development when you analyze movies. Do you mean that a character which enjoys enough screen time will always be a well-developed one? Best regards. Thanks, and keep up the great work. I don't think it really matters what how much screen time. You could have a character that comes on for five or ten minutes. Obviously, if you, the more screen time you have, the more opportunity you have for character development. But you could see a, a character throughout a whole movie yeah. and not be developed at all. You want to know their motivations, their personalities, why they think the way they do, why would they do the things they do that's all character development you know if, if there's something that happens in the movie how do they respond to it all those type of things Josh what do you think um, I think a perfect example of this is when William Hurt got nominated for a best supporting actor in a history of violence and he was in the movie for 11 minutes mm -hmm. so I don't think it's necessarily screen time a lot of it has to, has to do with writing um, I think you look at some of the greatest side characters in, in movie history, and they had very, very little screen time, uh, but they made movies. They've made the movies. Look, okay, look at uh, Days and Confused. Matthew McConaughey made that movie, and he wasn't in, I mean, what? He wasn't in 80% of that movie. I mean, he's around, but he's not in a ton of that movie. Uh, you got, uh, like, it's it, a lot of times it, it doesn't matter the character development as far as total screen time because yeah. you can get really tired of somebody really quick. It's if uh, they do the same thing if they're correct. just the same guy or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's all about growth. I don't think it's screen time. More growth. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, now on to the live Twitter questions. You can tweet us at Collider Video, and Sinead will pick out a few, and we'll, we'll do a few of these. Uh, what do we got? Mr. Mac Cheese tweets, any chance of a Monsters, Inc. 3 or a Bug's Life 2? Uh, I think so, especially Monsters. Uh, Bug's Life, I'm not sure. That probably wasn't one of the more popular Pixar yeah. or beloved franchises. I actually liked it. It was it was basically Seven Samurai. I feel like it's Bugs. sitting on the back burner. Yeah. Bugs uh, 2, but I love Monsters. But Monsters, they already had the prequel. Yeah. And then I have a feeling because people love those characters so much, they'll probably do a sequel sometime down the line. But they still have Incredibles 2. Doing Cars 3 for God knows I mean, whatever reason. I think it's because they sell a lot of toys. Yeah. And John Laster loves that franchise for some reason. And he's directing the third one himself. So yeah. that's why that one's getting made. Uh, but I think we're going to see Toy Story 4 is Wait, coming. We'd see monster. We'll see a Monsters before, well, well before we'd see a Bugs Life. Yeah. yeah. All right. What's next? Um, Calvin tweets, I love the after shows, but it made me wonder, how many sets do you guys have in your new studio? Uh, we have three sets, uh, two of which we use. <laughs> One is a brick wall that like doesn't <laughs> have any. We were originally going to use that for... Uh, <laughs> You know, if you guys know, we used to be part of AMC and AMC Indie Spotlight. We're going to use that for that set. We all but, love the brick wall. Like, yes. it's not going anywhere. We just don't use we it. We do photo yet. shoots in front of it all the time. Uh -huh. It's amazing. It's really My great new headshots. Yes. Yeah. Melba and I appreciate it. So we have this one, and we try and 
you know, with the back screens and, you know, with, we did Jedi Council. Usually we Jedi Council over on the other set. Yep. We did one this past week because we did, we stacked like five shows in one day. Yeah. And we, we put all the little toys here and whatnot and try to dress them up. I have yet to be invited over to that other set. I'm strictly okay. on this set. So. Yeah. You, but you do that Arrow after show. Arrow, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Walking Dead. Yeah. I love it. I love it on this set. How did you go from one after show to three? I'm just that good. I, I think you'd be like a, a spy or something like hey, that. Hey, Bridge of Spies. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> All right, what's next? Chad's Big Huge Geek tweets, Could Fox have made a mistake releasing the Peanuts movie in an already crowded month and so close to a Pixar movie? I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll find out this weekend. I don't think so, though, because it's opening against Spectre, which is totally different yeah. audiences. So, and we've kind of had a lull. I mean, what was it last weekend that was like the worst Oof, weekend of the, the year? I mean, well, for the, the last weekend was Halloween, and the uh, the only one that had sort of any excitement was uh, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, and that kind of bombed. That didn't even make top five, yeah. and, and the top three, I think, were the same as the yeah. ones before. Yeah. So. I think what the thing about Spectre will flash, right? Mm -hmm. It'll be two weeks basically, and then people will kind of die off. I think Peanuts will carry strong all the way up until mm -hmm. Star Wars because it is a great little holiday thing. You know, you and you're out at the mall, and your mom's like, "Go see something with your brother," and she buys you movie tickets. You and your brother go and see Peanuts. That's kind of how it worked in my family. Yeah, people forget that animated movies have legs. Yeah. They go on and on and on. I remember. What was that Dude, one movie? Inside Out is still number two right now. I remember, now. Uh, what was that, Despicable Me too. Like, yeah. it was like, it just kept going and going and going. And yeah. it was like, uh, and <laughs> when it passed, I forgot what the number was domestically. We're like, really? Minions and, just you, kept going, man. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. What's next? James tweets, what's the better day to go to the movies, Christmas or Thanksgiving? Oh, uh, Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. You got uh, you open your presents in the morning. You have an early like you dinner get presents? slash lunch. I don't get presents. Oh, sorry, Dan. Yeah. You want me, I'll get you something this yeah. year. Thanks. You don't get any presents. <laughs> the, we, I, Wendy, I, let's get Dennis I'm kind, presents. I'm kind of like older now, so it's kind of that that point where it's like I don't know. I I, I just don't. We're all gonna pull together eight dollars and we're gonna get Dennis a really nice gift Aww. this year. Guys. No, because like be you're amazing. you're older now. It's like yeah, if you want something, you just work for hard for it. Screw Save up the that. money I and you be buy presents for I'm like the rest Sinead. of my life. I want presents. If you're out there, my home I, address. I, I like buying stuff with my my money that I earn. Well, good it, for it's you. more satisfying that way. <laughs> I want gifts. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I agree. I yeah, think Christmas, Christmas is just a, a more fun time. Thanksgiving, I for some reason, I feel like it's more hectic right. around that time because like it's a shorter amount of time that you get a break. Yeah. And you're just like rushing around and you have dinner and all that stuff. Where Christmas, like Plus, no. like all of my, like growing up, all of my Jewish friends, obviously they, they don't celebrate Christmas, mm -hmm. so they always either go skiing or go to the movies. Mm -hmm. And I was always so jealous of that because I'd have to like hang out with my family all day. <laughs> like, oh, my family. they're going to skiing. This is amazing. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's next? Dusty tweets: How long before a release is a film typically completed? How close to the release can changes even be made? Um. Well, what's uh, it, it, it depends on the movies. All it's the heavy CGI ones are like being finished as they're being sent to the to the theaters. For Unless it's not like right now, Batman v Superman. I think it's finished. I think that thing is done and is just sitting there Trapped. on the shelf. Yeah. But that has to do with they changed the release date yeah. and then now they had to move it to something. Uh, they, they it's done, but they're not going to release it now. Yeah. But you uh, know they're still tinkering with Star Wars. I mean, yes. They're still tinkering. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. They got to get picture lock, which is the edit lock. But then they do visual effects mm -hmm. and then sound design. People always forget the sound mixing, the sound design. Ha are those all come in at the last moment? Sound. It's the hardest part about making a movie. Yeah. So I I think I wonder what the window is. Maybe a week or two. It's it's very close. Like much closer than I I couldn't imagine being like a director on a big budget movie where your movie's not done yet yeah. and it opens in two weeks, I would be freaking out. <laughs> well, I mean, man. Fantastic oh Four, they were editing it as we were watching it. They were yeah. like, oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> they're, they're watching your response. They're like, oh, he didn't like that scene. Bring in more of Nora. Ah, <laughs> Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? That's hilarious. Uh, Marcus tweets, after the surprise trailer today, do you think that there is any possibility of any more new footage for The Force Awakens? <gasps> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I think this was something that they, you know, had already planned and forgot that because of the world we live in now yeah. of the Internet and being able to pass everything around, you can that we were going to see it, too. Yeah. And uh, and I don't think there's going to be anything else. I woke up this morning and, you know, usually 
the normal amount of Facebook interaction or Twitter interaction. And there must have been a hundred tweets like between Mark Ellis and Christian Harloff yeah. and everybody like new footage. And I'm like, there's another one. Crap. I just got used to the first one. But no, I, I hope they don't do another trailer. I really don't. I, I don't think so. And on a side tangent, remember back in the day, celebrities used to, big celebrities used to do commercials in different countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they knew they would never be seen. Now with the internet, they're scared because they all get moved over yep. here and we can see them online. Yep. Bill Murray tried, yeah. lost the trans. All right, uh, what's next? Lee tweets, is there any news on Sherlock Holmes 3 or a National Treasure 3? I haven't heard anything. I know they're working, I think, on both of them, but I don't. I haven't heard anything solid. I think the more important question is, what would you be more excited to see? Because I think National Treasure I enjoyed, Sherlock Holmes I enjoyed. I thought both sequels were pretty underwhelming. Mm -hmm. Um I, I mean, I guess I trend towards Sherlock Holmes, but be, I'd be very apprehensive about either one. Yeah, I would be more excited for the Sherlock Holmes as well. Uh, National Treasure, I did like the first one, but yeah. the second one was terrible. Yeah, not very good. So, all right, all right, let's take two more. Andre's tweets, are you guys still excited about Spectre despite mediocre reviews? Uh, I saw Spectre, so I can't say <laughs> whether I'm excited or not. I personally, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was as good as... Uh, as Skyfall or Casino Royale, better than Quantum of Solace. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, if you're a Bond fan, I think I still recommend going and see, seeing it. I haven't seen it, um, but I, via the, the mediocre reviews, I was going to go see it opening weekend this mm -hmm. weekend. I'll probably wait till next. Are you interested, Sinead, to see Spectre? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think I need to see it. Okay. <laughs> I like Bond, so I think I need to see it. Yeah, it's almost I've, forcing you to see it. Um, I mean, yeah, aside from actually having to see it, but no, no, I think I need to see it. I think that if you like Bond, don't listen just to reviews, like actually go see it because it's still like a huge franchise. You love the franchise for a reason. Has so Dan suck it up and go see yeah. it. Has Daniel Craig lost his shine for you guys? I think he's dull He a seems, bit honestly, if you ask me, I feel like he seems like he's over it. Yeah, I think he is. He looks like he's like mailing it in. I'm done, yo. Yeah. Like, that's what he's secretly saying. I now own 700 tuxedos. I don't need another movie. <laughs> all right, last one. Uh, Trey tweets, what is your single favorite Tarantino film? Hashtag Sinead is Bay. Uh, Sinead is Bay. <laughs> that, good that, good throw why, in there, That's Sinead. why Sinead picked that, <laughs> that one. Is not Now you know I how to get one. your question live on Just air. go take a selfie by yeah. the brick wall, Sinead. I will. Okay. Um, that one's a tough one for me because I, I, I love him as a director and... I love most of his movies. I mean, yeah. there's some that are, are like Jackie Brown. It's probably my least favorite mm -hmm. that or death proof. Uh, oh, it's tough because actually my favorite one that he wrote was actually one he didn't direct, which was true, true romance. romance. Yeah. And then, Ooh, reservoir dogs to me is like, even though it was that low budget, my, my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> if I had to sit down, but I mean, lately he's been killing it with his movies. Yeah. It's tough. If I had to say it, reservoir dogs. Okay. Uh, I, Reservoir Dogs was growing up me and my best friend we watched it all the time it kind of made me want to start writing mm -hmm. things um, but that being said my favorite is Inglorious Bastards and I know I pro like a lot of people that's nowhere even near their top three I, be, like I didn't love the ending of Inglorious Bastards but the whole way that movie was set up and the way it treated World War II I absolutely loved you didn't love the ending? I didn't I didn't love I didn't love the the way they that it wasn't historically accurate. I loved how they oh. killed everybody. I just didn't like how it wasn't historically accurate. Oh, I That's think all. that thing went out the window like <laughs> midway through the movie. Oh, historical yeah. accuracy. <laughs> uh, I, I personally love Inglourious Bastard. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I enjoyed the ending. Yeah. Sinead, what are your favorite? What's your favorite Tarantino? Mine movie? is Inglourious Bastard. There you go. I didn't really didn't think either one of you were going to say that, but yeah. Dennis, I remember at my interview for AMC, mm -hmm. you guys asked me like what made me get into movies, and it was watching that movie. Like yeah. I, I, there's something about that movie. I think it's the tavern scene. Oh yeah, <laughs> changed my life. It's the best, mm -hmm. the best. I love it. Plus, people on Twitter always tell me I look like Eli Roth, which I don't see. I don't. I can see it. Huh. I can see okay. it. Um, I. Speaking of the, not the tavern scene, but the opening sequence, I always point to as one of the best opening sequence in a movie ever. Yeah. Like you, they establish the tone, yeah. who that character is. There's so much tension oh. in it. You're you, hooked right away. Exactly. Right away. Like the whole Shut scene. Up. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. All right, guys. So that's <laughs> it for today's Friday special episode of Collider Movie Talk. 
I'd like to thank the people on the panel with me. Uh, Josh, where can people find you? Hey, I'm Josh Makuga. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh Makuga. On here on Collider, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Arrow, and the Walking Dead recap shows, and my show, Between the Sheets, youtube.com slash Between the Sheets TV. And uh, thanks to uh, David Griffin. Uh, where can people find you, David? <laughs> well, uh, uh, I've been around. Uh, I like that uh, da, da, we da, still da, show da, his what? empty seat uh, uh, in uh, his uh, handle. Uh, uh, I like uh, the work after him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And Sinead, uh, where can we find Excellent you? Excellent impression. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm David Griffith. Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Sinead DeVries and at that so Sinead.com. And you can find me on Twitter at Think Hero or on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. And you can find some of my sketch videos that I've written and directed on Think Hero Pro. Also, don't forget to subscribe to uh, Collider Videos, uh, YouTube.com slash Collider Videos. And we will see you guys next week. Or not. <laughs> Our YouTube channel, it'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.